you have to connect your uh, 5 megapixel IP uh, Wi-Fi camera up to the network so if you want to the network ready and how to view that through your browser so at the moment you're seeing a, a browser window this is just showing our website um, and uh, what we need to do first of all is with your mini IP camera is what you need to do is you need to just connect the uh, the cable on the IP camera First of all, connect it up to the mains using the, the DC um, plug and also connect the um, to the network using the little network adapter. So you just plug that straight into your router uh, and then away you go. So, um, so, so basically it's now good to go and it'll make that camera now wired through the network so you can actually have it wired as opposed to wireless. You don't have to change any of the settings, it'll just default onto network as opposed to to Wi-Fi. The camera as well is also PoE so if you've got a PoE injector one that powers the camera at the at the um, at the uh, um, the network end you can actually plug it into a PoE injector which is just an advanced power supply and it'll power the camera as well so you don't need the 12 volt power supply if you're doing it that method. So once you've got it, got it connected, um, what you need to do then is to find the IP address of the camera. So what you do is you use from the previous videos we showed you how to connect up to the um, up to your up to your uh, mobile phone, and here we're using an iPhone 6, so it's exactly the same. Um, as you can see, we brought. Uh, if I just go back a step, we've gone to Cam High, and we just brought that up and it's saying it's connecting and it's online. So the camera's online on the network um, and if we push the little cog button um, and then go, if you go right to the bottom and you go to device information and on there and um, right at, near, the, near the bottom IP address um, that's the IP address. An IP address is its unique number on the network. So that's what we need to find that number to, in order to put it in the in the browser browser window up there. So as, as you can see, it's 192.168.1.96. Now it might be different on yours. So just check it through the device information. That will tell you. Now once you know that information, all you all you need to do is you just go into your browser and then all you do is you type there we go, oh there's a little delay there if you type that in and it should come up with with uh, it should come up with that um, basically that window there so it should come up with that window and on there it's uh, basically it's telling you um, you know that it's it's connecting up to the up to the camera. It's having trouble focusing here at the moment. I don't know why, but anyway, we'll we'll persevere and we click on the PC view. So once that's connected, um, uh, and it probably may ask you for it may actually ask you for a. Um, we just pop that camera over there and may ask you for a username and password. The username and password is admin admin and it should just connect up and then your browser should remember it. So um, now as you see that's the whole interface. Um, on, the, on that interface um, you can use any browser. Uh, here we're using uh, Chrome but you can use uh, Firefox or Internet Explorer or you know on a Mac you can use exactly the same. So um, what you do is you just on the left hand side you'll see the, some settings, don't worry about the, the, the zoom controllers or anything I've just made it out of focus again so I <laughs> apologize, here we go so um, and then um, basically the um, I'll just, just alter it slightly get that focus just right there we go there we go. Right, that's that's better. Sorry about that. Yeah. So ignore the the settings on the on the left hand side, um, and uh, basically you can because uh, these are sort of for pan tilt and zoom zoom cameras. You click on the settings, and as you see, there's a whole load of sub menus on the on the left hand side. You, you can go from um, you can go uh, go straight into the video. You can either change the video uh, resolution and its frame rate and even the keyframes and that's for your main uh, stream and then your substream because all IP cameras they run uh, several streams at once 
uh, the lower substreams are perfect for sort of mobile devices to keep the compression really low but you can change all the settings on there and don't forget if you change the settings um, uh, with that you just click apply and it'll it'll change them now I'll quickly go through all of them that was video uh, OSD is the on-screen display and that's the little message uh, that's actually on the on the video so um, and ba basically you can change IP camera to um, anything you like Lbox camera or Nestbox camera or anything you like so you can change that there and also change the location from top left top right any any which way you can even include the time and date stamp um, and uh, any other information that you want to so don't forget to click apply when you've done that and then you get it uh, now we go to image and then on the image you can change all the settings for the actual image quality so you can slide these sliders up and down so you can change the brightness you can see it changes it um, and that will physically change the, the, the spec on the camera, you can even flip it or mirror it. You can also also change all the advanced settings like WDR or, or even tweak the night vision when it kicks in or not and, and the threshold and the cut time. So don't forget also uh, just, to, just to click apply when you've done that. So and then audio is exactly the same. It normally uses G7, G711 uh, as compression. You don't have to change that. You can turn the audio on and off, and the same with the substream, um, which is really really good. So um, uh, that's basically all the the image settings. And then the network. If you go to network. Um, this is where you can change the network settings. So if you want a specific IP address, you can change it off dynamic. At the moment, set to dynamic, which means the router uh, or whoever masters your network will assign it an IP number, and uh, that that can be prone to change if it's set to dynamic. You can set it to a specific IP address, but um, just make sure that when you set an IP address, that you set it with the first three first three sets of numbers are identical the last one is different and doesn't clash with anything on your network so that way you can know there's a fixed IP and you can see it but it's not crucial to 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 do that or to change that so again all the uh, advanced settings for the network uh, for the wireless um, Again, uh, this uh, is hopping onto the Office Wi-Fi, so uh, it's it's already saved that onto the onto that. You can change the settings on there. Um, also, you can reset the camera, so you can jump back to without the um, network details in there. Uh, you reset the camera back to defaults, and uh, that will reset it easily for you. DDNS is when you want to kind of get anywhere externally outside your your home. OnVIF is just a standard um, protocol for viewing the, the, the camera on an OnVIF compatible device. A lot of uh, network recorders use this and it's actually brilliant. It, it, it can be detected on most uh, top end or high end recorders including um, high vision and um, all manner of other other recorders can um, pick up this little camera, which is really good. And you can change all the settings. Uh, P2P, that's that's peer to peer. You can connect directly with your camera. That's its uh, little ID, um, which it uses, which you see in the app. Um, right, and then if you go to alarm, you go. Um, you can have it uh, create an alarm if you want to. You can have it as an audio alarm, uh, so it can trigger uh, and do an alarm. You can also set the the it to email you if you want it, um, when there's motion, so it triggers and then set. But a lot of the settings you can do uh, all on the on the app. This is basically just mirroring the settings on the app. So. Um, so you, you can, once it's triggered, you can let it record a picture or video straight to your straight to your um, SD card um, and change all those settings for that. So um, and then schedule, you can change the schedule recording. You can do uh, 24 hour recording, or you can set only specific days uh, to have that motion recording if you want to, or recording all the time. And then you can go to advance. Um, I'll just quickly go through these. Advance is the user. You can change the username and password for the camera itself, but not the sort of Wi-Fi I, um, uh, uh, password. Just the the camera itself, so nobody can access it. Um, 
um, again you can actually set the SD recording uh, through the uh, uh, auto snap or a timer recording through the um, through the through the app as well uh, through the interface as well and then you could set up the email settings so if you've got your Gmail account you can allow it to when it's motion is triggered you can get it to send you an email and you just put in your your Gmail settings for your thing and if your if your network is connected to the to the internet the camera will trick them uh, trip or the camera will be triggered by recording it will then send an email to you um, via the settings through your Gmail or Hotmail or whatever you use same again with FTP you can upload it to a server FTP is a great way of uh, saving on, on a cloud and and saving in increments a lot of time-lapse cameras use FTP but you need a, a special FTP server in order to save those files onto there so um, uh, that's that one terminals just to get in and out of the, the the system and then some more advanced settings for other types of camera and then if you go to uh, system you can change the time so you can change the time to match your PC time um, and you can change the actual um, central time as well so it's always good to change that to UK uh, UK time so we just uh, I'll pop that there okay, here we go GMT so what we need there okay so GMT uh, da, da, da. Oh, there it is, London. Okay, there it is. Okay, and you push apply, and it'll it'll save it, and and that's on GMT time. And then initialize, you can actually re, as I say, reboot the the camera or go back to factory uh, default and restore ba basically the the system. Also, you can upgrade the firmware if there needs to be in the future. Then device information, all the information, including all the firmware updates and uh, all the, the serial codes. And then also a system log to tell you what it's actually doing and what it's done, if there's any, any issues. And you can always go back to the monitor and get a live monitor. The beauty of this is just to administer the, the, the interface for the camera or the settings. You can do all the settings on the app as well, but it just mirrors that. Also, you can use third party um, uh, software um, um, to, to interface with this camera, and which will give you a lot more motion recording uh, if you've got it recorded on the network. So, um, so yeah, so. Basically, it's fully flexible, really easy to use, really simple to uh, to uh, um, set up and 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 and, uh, and configure. So I hope you like the video. Um, uh, please like the the video. Please do subscribe. Please do recommend our, our uh, this product. It's a fantastic product to others. And uh, have a look at our website. Anything you need to know, just give us a shout. We'll be happy to help. I hope you like the video and, and you pop back soon. Cheers.